Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. So my cucumber plants have a fungal issue. This is cucumber um, anthracnose probably. Fungal issues are typically classified as leaf spot diseases and you get these spots on there and it's brown rings within rings, concentric rings, and when you have that yellow halo, that's a fungal issue. Could be a leaf spot, could be anthracnose. They show up on all kinds of different plants, different um, strains affect different plants. However, this cucumber plant has a fungal issue and it's everywhere. And you can see that it probably started right over here, came up from the ground or whatever, worked its way up. I got behind in my prevention spraying. That's what I recommend most to really deal with these things. If you're spraying your antifungals early and ahead of time, they're going to look great. And the plants did well for a while. So what you want to do technically is to remove the damaged leaves, bag them up, throw them away, don't compost them. New growth should come out healthy and fine. So we're going to spray all this, get the fungal issues under control, and everything new that's coming out will be green and it'll be good to go. Lots of cucumbers in there too. So this plant is still producing. But let's get to the spraying. I don't typically myself remove everything. I'll remove a lot of the leaves, but you don't have to be perfect with the removal because we're gonna spray every leaf, top and bottom. And I'll show you the sprays that I'm using. Here's my first cucumber plant that I planted. This has been growing strong since really the beginning of May. Now, when you're looking at the leaf patterns, you may get confused. You won't know if it's anthracnose, if it's a leaf spot, if it's a downy mildew, maybe it's insects chewing on the underside. It's okay not to know exactly what is on there. It's good practice to be able to identify the disease, but on the internet, on YouTube, there's all, like, people will look at this and call it different things. You got your fungus, you got your mildews, you have your insects. The treatment that I'm gonna show you with hydrogen peroxide and then peppermint oil really works well to manage anything that comes up on cucumber plants. So you may not be able to identify exactly what's going on, but if your leaf doesn't look completely green, something should be sprayed on there nine times out of ten. I removed a lot of the cucumber leaves. You don't have to get every one that has the fungal issue on there. The sprays that you're going to put on will control it. Um, I mean, you could take them all off, but you run into this issue. So I'm in a pretty shady area. Those cucumbers aren't quite the size, but you want to pick them. If you remove a bunch of leaves and the sun is coming in and hitting them, they no longer have the protect protection of the shade from the leaves, they're going to start to white out on the skin and they're going to get sun scald. So you do want to remove the cucumber plants. I am cutting the uh, leaves back. So let's just find an example. Here's a leaf right here. And you just go back to the vine, pair of scissors, and you just snip it pretty close. You don't need to worry about whether or not bugs are going to get in there, or insects are going to get in there. You have a pretty beat up cucumber plant. So remove a lot of the leaves and then we get to spraying. So I'm going to use hydrogen peroxide spray. I've been using it for years. I'm comfortable with it. I use eight ounces in one gallon of water. I will link my tomato video that talks about hydrogen peroxide in there. First thing is you need to test spray before you spray your entire garden with a new spray. So I started hydrogen peroxide at four to six ounces per gallon. Uh, of water. I tested it out on cucumbers, beans, melons, cantaloupe, um, all kinds of different plants. And I've become comfortable using eight ounces per gallon. Again, I would recommend starting with four to six ounces per gallon on your plants and kind of test it. Different things affect how effective or how damaging the sprays are. Elevation, temperatures, all kinds of different things. So that's kind of on you. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the hydrogen peroxide, and these principles are the same. H2O2 actually cleans and kills the fungus on the leaves. So when you spray on the hydrogen peroxide, it's actually cleaning the leaf. The H2O2 uh, breaks down into water and oxygen, and that process. Um, messes up the fungus basically, basically kills it off. You can look up the science behind it, but it's solid. So when I spray the leaf, I'm basically uh, killing off the fungus. H2O2 will be gone within 24 hours. I want to do that first. And then I'm going to come in with an antifungal like baking soda, which changes the pH on the leaf. And that will really slow and prevent the disease from spreading. Now you might say, well, why don't I just use one or the other? You can. However, I like to use the H2O2 to clean the leaves, kill off the fungus. I might even wait 
a day or two, spray the hydrogen peroxide again. And if things look under control, I stop. And I might not even put on the baking soda spray. And you're gonna say, well, you know, you just said to put it on there. So the whole idea is figuring out what are the problems in your garden. I have found in my garden, I can do two or three rounds of hydrogen peroxide and it really stops the problem. This is what happened. Then it got hot. I was focusing on watering. I didn't feel like coming out here. Um, there was nothing on the leaves because the H2O2 goes away. If I would have had baking soda out here, it would have just slowed this whole outbreak, maybe even prevented it. So I didn't put in that next level of antifungal. And the baking soda will stay on here for as long as um, it doesn't rain. When the rain comes, you do have to reapply it. But it sits on the leaves, changes the pH level on the leaf, makes it more alkaline, and the fungus just finds it inhospitable. It can't multiply, it can't spread. So you sort of have to have a plan in place. But there are options on how you do prevention spraying and you stop fungal diseases on your cucumber plants. So, in this case, H2O2, I'll show you um, how I do that. And then we'll... Here is my spray. I use one container. This is a gallon sprayer for my hydrogen peroxide. And the answer is no. You can't mix H2O2 with the baking soda and with other chemicals. Everything's a chemical, organic or not, they will react together. So you just want clean H2O2 in here. It's the 3% solution you buy at the grocery store, um, pharmacy, whatever. But it should say 3% on there and you dilute it down to 48 ounces per gallon of water. It works really well. Again, test spray. So first thing you want to do, pick any of the larger cucumbers. If you get hydrogen peroxide on stuff, you can just rinse it off if you want and eat it. I mean, you can use it for an oral rinse. You want to pick up any vine off the ground and just tuck it in somewhere so you can get underneath and spray. So this is my routine. I use H2O2 just about everywhere in my garden now. You have to test spray, you have to learn what works in your area because things can just vary. I don't have a solid reason of why we can be in here spraying with a solution of eight ounces or one cup per gallon and then maybe it damages your garden. You just have to test spray. So you can see that I am really soaking down everything really well. I'm covering the actual vines, getting into the leaves, covering the soil. You're going to have leaves left behind. This is not really an issue that you've got this problem because you left stuff on the ground. These issues that if you have them are going to show up no matter what. The whole key is really just this preventive spraying. So I really want to spend time cleaning the bottom of these cucumber plants, cleaning the soil of the surface cleaning the surface of the soil and that makes a really big difference a lot of these diseases start lower and work their way up and you get the idea that I'm going under each leaf spraying it well and soaking it down so here's my routine like I said I use H2O2 on most of my plants from this side I'm really trying to get all the undersides of the leaves so I may do this you know, typically if I saw a couple of spots on here, I'm going to go to a cucumber at the end of the video that has these problems starting to show up. I'll talk a little bit more about this. I will walk through my garden. If I see my tomato plant has some spotting, I'll hit it with the H2O2. That usually keeps things under control. I don't have to go to the antifungals if I don't want to, like baking soda. Even in saying that, it's confusing. So I want to just say this again. H2O2 contacts kills goes away your other antifungals like baking soda stays on the leaf and it makes it inhospitable and you can choose e either strategy or a combination of both in some areas you may be able to just put down a baking soda spray top and bottom every 10 days 14 days and it works really well in other places it's just more humid more rainy more hot the Baking soda spray is always getting washed off. You don't want to be putting it on there all the time. The H2O2 really cleans the leaves, even before you may even see the spotting. So you may want to do the H2O2 more often and forego the baking soda spray. Or maybe you're in a place where you hit it with the H2O2, get it under control, and then you can still spray with the baking soda spray and it's not that much work. 
I know that wasn't the best explanation, but every garden is different, so you just have to figure out what works, not just for the diseases, but also what works for you. If you're putting on baking soda spray, uh, you know, two or three times a week because it just rains so much in your area, or it's just so humid, you know, the humidity clings to the leaves and the baking soda spray or the antifungal drips off, you may want to do more of the hydrogen peroxide. Best thing to do, keep a journal and practice. So I'm soaking the undersides of these leaves really well. I'm gonna wait two days, just let this do its thing. I'm gonna hit it again with the hydrogen peroxide spray and then I will put the baking soda spray on there. I'm not gonna actually spray the baking soda spray because it's too early. What I do is it's one to two tablespoons of baking soda in a gallon of water and then I coat the top and bottom leaves. You want to spray in the morning. It's 7 15 a.m. right now. You don't want to be spraying, you know, in the afternoon when it's 90 some degrees, the leaves are wilting, they're a little bit weaker then. You also want to start with the one tablespoon of baking soda when it gets hot because sometimes a spray does really well on your plants when it's 70 80 degrees. And then that same concentration, when it's now in the 90s, because the leaves wilt in the heat, that spray damages your leaves. So I wouldn't go with two tablespoons of baking soda right now in the heat. I would just go with one tablespoon. And you spray that uh, one tablespoon per gallon. And then you spray that every 7, 10, 14 days, depending on how much rain you have. In some places, people are using um, overhead sprinkling, which is fine, but that's going to wash off the baking soda too. So you just have to have a plan in place. All right, let's go over to that other plant and I'm going to finish up here and I'll talk about spraying. Here's one. cucumber plant wave number three, maybe four. And you might get the idea that I plant my cucumbers in waves. This is a completely green, very healthy plant. No signs of any problems on here at all. No fungal issues, no mildews, no uh, spider mites. If you just want to use hydrogen peroxide, you could do this as maintenance every seven days or so. Um, maybe longer when it's kind of the off season for the disease. And what I mean by that is in July, that's when the humidity goes up here in Maryland. That's when the problems come. So when you have the problem times, you spray more often. But it's just really getting the undersides cleaning this with hydrogen peroxide. If you don't want to use the hydrogen peroxide, you'd be spraying the baking soda spray every seven to 10 days and just making that leaf inhospitable um, to the fungus so the fungus doesn't spread or attach. When it rains, you would have to replace it. So the, there's a lot of different strategies. I wish I could just give you a set format for how often to do everything, but our gardens are all over the world and we have different uh, microclimates, different diseases, different problems. So you just have to keep a journal and work out a plan that works for you. Here's my second wave of cucumbers and I just did a video on pruning these out. The plant that you just saw was not pruned. So when you have lots of leaves, you have poor airflow, the disease, like I showed you, can spread like wildfire. So pruning makes a difference. I will put that video um, of the pruning in the video description. So I removed a lot of the leaves already from the bottom. You can see some of the spots are showing up on here. So I'm just going to give it a spray. You could remove those leaves if you want. Going to start again at the bottom, spray the vines, get the surface, and then I'm just going to start again spraying the underside. And I would just cover everything. I like to spray, you know, from one side over to the other. And you just want to make sure that you're going to be cleaning the leaves off. All right, so I confused you thoroughly with the hydrogen peroxide and the baking soda. There's another spray I use, which is peppermint oil, and that's, you can find out on my channel too. But it's one to two teaspoons in a gallon of water with one tablespoon of the Castile type soaps, which are the safest soaps. If you're gonna use a detergent soap, you wanna use one or two teaspoons. And you put soap in there so that the oil disperses through the water. So after a day or two goes by of the hydrogen peroxide, because my plants get spider mites on the undersides, I have found that the peppermint oil really manages spider mites. And that's a problem I get every year. I don't think they're on here right now because I've been using the peppermint oil spray more so than the H2O2. But I'm gonna hit them again day or two with the peppermint oil spray. And that's really to spray on the undersides of the leaves. And you can find all those recipes on my YouTube channel.
So that's going to take care of the cucumber plant, I believe, with all the problems that are showing up now. And this happens all the time in July in my area. And if I could just follow my advice, I'd be a little better at the prevention spraying and spraying on top of it. But we all get tired, we all get exhausted, and you only have to miss a couple of days. So finally, after, say, we do all the spraying of the hydrogen peroxide, you've removed a lot of leaves, give your plant a gallon of water-soluble fertilizer. I use fish emulsion or AgroThrive. Just spread out all around the base. They're going to enjoy that extra nitrogen to create new leaves for you um, once that disease is under control. So that extra nitrogen really helps out when you have to strip off a lot of the leaves of the plants. Thanks for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. Hydrogen peroxide cleans the leaves. Baking soda stays on the leaves, makes it more difficult for the fungus to move across the plant. Thanks for watching.